Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to have a little art chat. Um, and I wanted to talk about something that is going on in the art world now that I think is gonna have huge implication for the art world and for artists, but also just for people who love art and for even potentially human creativity. And that is AI art. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what is AI art, how does it work, um, and then go a little bit into what I think the pros of AI art are, but also talk about what I think the cons of it are. And then I'm gonna end the video with some open questions that I think um, we as artists and art lovers um, want to answer with regards to this new technology. And I wanted to talk about this because I've heard some other artists talk about it recently. Um, like Kat Grapham did a video on this recently that goes over a lot of the financing involved in creating AI art and some of the problematic aspects there. It's a really good video. Um, if you want to learn more, you should totally check it out. Um, also, Nicolas Uribe, who's a painter that I love, um, he recently had an AI debate with Steven Zapata, who also has done a video on um, some of the dark side of AI art. And so just listening to these conversations and hearing other artists talk about it too has got me just thinking more about um, what is AI art and what does it mean for artists and for art lovers. So what is AI art? AI art is using artificial intelligence to create art. You can think of it as computer generated art. And in the past, I, I think AI art's been around for a long time, but it used to not be very good. Um, but the reason why more artists are talking about it now is because it actually has gotten really good really fast. Um, and if you look, there's certain popular AIs, there, there's different companies that are doing different AI art algorithms, but um, you can go look at one, one popular one is Midjourney. And if you just type in like on Google, you can mid -journey, you can Google Midjourney's AI art and see um, the art that's being created, and it's really good. And it's also indistinguishable from art created by humans. I mean, you you'll see these pieces, and it's it's not obvious uh, whether a human created it or a computer created it. Like they're so seamlessly put together, um, they really look generated by an artist. But the crazy thing is, they're not they can be generated in just seconds. All you have to do is type in a prompt, um, like, I don't know, you can type in, a recent one was alien in a bookstore, and it'll create this image of an alien in a bookstore um, that looks so realistic and, and as if someone had spent, you know, hours and hours uh, working on this illustration. So the technology is super, super powerful and it works really, really well. And it's like all of a sudden we kind of anything that's on our mind we can create images of in just seconds which is really amazing and you might wonder well does AI art have its own style and on the default settings it does seem like these programs do have kind of a default style I think if you don't specify a style what I've seen from like Midjourney is that they look pretty realistic um, and, and sort of sci-fi, they have like a sci-fi illustrative quality to them. Um, but, but you can also do things like specify, uh, sunflowers Van Gogh, and then it'll come up with a painting of sunflowers that looks like in the style of Van Gogh. So not only does it, um, does it kind of have its own style that it's created, but it also, um, can mimic the style of living and dead artists. So how does it work? So we have this magical tool where we can just type in anything and then all of a sudden it can spit out an image. It can create this beautiful work of art in just seconds. And the way that it works is um, like a lot of machine learning and AI is that it uses a database that has been scraped from, um, in this case, images from across the web. Um, and it uses a database to train the AI, to train the program on what is art and what images look like and what is considered beautiful and that sort of thing. And then by looking at millions or even billions of images, the AI starts to learn, oh, what does an image look like? What does a painting look like? What does a work of art look like? 
Um, and so in that way, it's able to kind of scrape all of these, all of these available works of art and then combine them together and um, create these rules of thumb so that when you ask it to paint something or make something, it can then create that image for you. And if you're thinking, oh, well, this just seems like it's about digital art and maybe I'm a traditional artist um, or I'm, I just like to collect traditional art so this doesn't really affect me, um, that's not exactly true. So uh, recently there were some researchers who used AI to recreate or to um, basically simulate a new Rembrandt painting. So they, and then they 3D printed it. So they first used the AI to generate a digital image of what the Rembrandt painting looked like, but they combined it with images of um, the thickness of his paint that he used. And they use a special 3D printer that prints oil paint. Um, to actually be able to 3D print a Van Gogh is, is insane, or not a Van Gogh, a <laughs> Rembrandt. Um, but yeah, pretty crazy. And when I'm talking about how it works, so it's drawing on all these images that artists have put online, um, but most of these images, a lot of these images are protected by copyright. Um, when an artist puts the, their image online, there are things that you can and can't do with it. And you can't, you, you wouldn't be able to just take an image that an artist has posted online and then be able to print it on a bunch of t-shirts. Then you'd be violating, um, you'd be violating the artist's copyright. If you wanted to use it, you would have to talk to the artist. You'd have to, um, come up with an agreement with them to license their art, to pay them for that image. And then you could use it on your shirts or on your products. But in the case of AI art, um, you have that artist's work is being used in databases um, and then AI is being trained by these companies that are not run by the artists themselves. They're, um, they're tech companies that specialize in building these algorithms in AI and that sort of thing. Um, and they're taking all of the images that these artists have worked on and then they're using that to train this AI and then they're going and selling those images that the AI has created. Um, and then like, I, I think it, it might, I might feel a little bit different about this if they weren't going forward and copywriting those new images. If the, if the images that were created were just completely free for anyone to use. Um, but like, I wanted to show you an example of an image, um, that mid journey would create for this video. I thought, oh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll type in a prompt, I'll create an image and then I'll show you guys in this video. Um, but I'm actually not allowed to do that. The images that um, that are created by Midjourney are actually protected by copyright, even though it's possible that my art was used in their database to train the algorithm to create this image, and I and the other artists who were used to create the image, um, they didn't receive any sort of compensation and they didn't uh, have any copyright protection. And especially when the AI is generating art that is clearly tailored to a particular artist's style, to me, that seems like a pretty clear violation of copyright. And you might think, well, this AI art, it just seems like a fun thing. Um, what's the big deal? But the big deal is there's a lot of money in this. And Kat Grapham goes into this more in their video, but there's a lot of money involved in AI art. And it just seems problematic to me that um, artists who tend to not be compensated much for their work are not getting any compensation from this. So now that you know a little bit about it, you can imagine how companies that may have hired artists to do storyboarding for them or come up with character designs, or maybe publishers who would have hired an artist to create a book cover or things like that. Maybe instead of hiring these artists and paying artists, they're going to be hiring or they're going to be paying for AI art instead. And this has already happened. Um, according to Kat Grapham, there was already a graphic novel that was created that was completely uh, done using AI art. So as you can see, AI art can be hugely disruptive, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think about back in the day, um, if you wanted to create an image you ha before photography, you had to hire a painter and painters kind of had exclusive control over image making. Um, but then photography came around and then suddenly anyone with money for a camera could go and create their own images. And you would think, oh, maybe that would kill painting. There wouldn't be a need for painters anymore. But painting stuck around, it just changed. And not only did painting change, but painters like me and a lot of the painters I love actually started using photography 
as a tool to help them make better paintings. So just because this technology is super disruptive doesn't mean that it's going to mean the end of traditional art or the end of artists making their art. It could actually be a tool that artists like to use to make their art better. Which leads me to my next topic. What are the pros of AI art? One of the cool things is that it can really help people visualize their ideas. Now you don't need to train for years and years in drawing and painting to be able to have your ideas appear right in front of you on the page. And that's pretty cool. And as I mentioned, artists can also use AI to help make their art better. Maybe if you are trying to think of a new idea, you can use AI to help get inspiration or to iterate across ideas before you choose one that you want to develop further. It could also inspire more people to get into art. Maybe you play around a little bit with the AI art and you get excited about what you're seeing and then you want to take it a step further by doing it yourself or you know using those images to create your own images. So in a way it could inspire new artists. One of the other cool things about AI art is I love the idea of being able to pull together all of human creativity and see what comes out in the end. If we could just put all of the biggest creative minds together to, to make art and make images, uh, what would happen? And I think that that's a really cool thing to think about. And, and AI is not there yet. Um, there's limitations to the data set and, and what art it's being trained on, but, um, but I think we could go more in that direction. And I think that's really exciting. So these are the things that I find really exciting about AI art. Um, but it's not without its cons. So one of the biggest things that bothers me is it feels like artists who already have a hard time making a living are being taken advantage of by these tech companies that are using their work and profiting from their work and the artists aren't seeing any compensation. And in some cases, this AI art is going to be replacing artists' jobs. And one argument that people say is, well, what's the problem? Isn't that what artists have been doing all along? After all, like myself as an artist, I've been influenced by a lot of other painters that I've seen and their influence flows into my work, but I don't, I don't pay royalties to all of the artists whose work I've seen before I make a painting. But I think the key difference here is that in the old system, when human artists are learning from human artists, there's this like natural slowness that's built into the process. Like um, I have to spend years and years and years learning my craft and learning to paint if I want to try to paint like any of the artists that I love. So there's this like, there are breaks built into the process that prevent artists from being able to easily cannibalize each other's work. When it comes to AI, these breaks are totally non-existent. Um, in something that would take, you know, 10, 20, 30 years of human time to learn, AI can learn in just uh, days, weeks, even faster. Um, so these natural breaks are gone and I think it just, completely changes the playing field. I also worry that it might discourage people to make art themselves, since it becomes so easy to just make any image you want at the click of a button, why would you invest all that time into learning the craft of making art? And I think that's a big shame, because for me, I, like, I love to create beautiful paintings, but my favorite part is the process of painting and the thing that I learn while I'm painting, the discoveries that I make, um, and and kind of the the challenges that I have to overcome. And that whole experience is baked into each painting. Um, and it would just be lost if all I had to do was click a button. And as I mentioned, I think it seems problematic that artists can't opt out into the data set or even what Steven Zapata suggested was that the data set should be an opt in model where artists are actively choosing if they wanna be in the data set. Um, if that were the situation, I think I would feel a lot more comfortable with, um, with the innovations in AI art. One question I have is, are we outsourcing our imaginations? Um, and I think about this because when I was a kid, one of the main reasons why I learned to draw was because I wanted to convey the images in my head onto paper. And, um, and I learned a lot about myself and my imagination and developed a lot of my ideas through that process. And I'm wondering how things would develop differently if I'd been able to just type in what was ever, whatever was in my head and the AI would create the image for me. And I think you can miss out a lot on the joy of creating new compositions or making discoveries about color and light and the way these, these things come together. I think if it's made so easy to create these images, um, then you kind of lose that. Another question is, what if the artists that you love turned out to be AI? 
I was thinking about this recently because most of the artists that I really like, I just follow on Instagram or on social media and I've never actually met them in person. I've never actually seen their art in person. So what if it turned out that they were actually just an algorithm? When I think about this question, my initial gut reaction is I think I would be upset. But then as I think about it more, I think I would actually, I think I would still follow those artists and I would still think of them as artists and I would still want to see the new works that they create. But I think the key point is like, I wouldn't want to be deceived. I would want to know that what I'm following is an AI versus a human being. I think it's important that there's transparency in that. The last question is, how will this impact artists in society? Tech has given us so many things that improve our quality of life and also create new jobs and new livelihoods. But at the same time, it can be really disruptive and also destroy jobs and livelihoods. In the US, automation helped improve manufacturing, but it also destroyed a lot of jobs. And it's not easy for someone who's been doing a job for most of their life to go back to school and get retrained. Even if there are new jobs that are created from this new technology, um, the people who had the old jobs can't necessarily take advantage of that. And I think this is where the idea of basic income becomes really important. Because as we automate more and more jobs, um, it's going to be hard for people to retrain for any new jobs if they're created. And there's also no guarantee that the number of new jobs that are created will be enough to account for all of the jobs that are lost. So basic income is really important because it allows people to even if they lose their job in this situation, they can still maintain a good quality of life. And if we help artists in this way, then maybe the less fun parts of art, the work could be automated so that artists can focus on creating the work that they're most passionate about. So what do you think? How can we embrace the awesome possibilities of AI art while also protecting the lives of current artists and of future artists to come? Will AI art revolutionize the art world or destroy it? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and a special shout out to all my supporters on Patreon who helped make this video happen. I appreciate you guys so much and thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. If you wanna become a Patreon as well, you can click the link below and check out the details. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.